Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new Upgrade Your OET Vocabulary Quiz by Bose Learning. This one also includes a pharmacy role play. And today's quiz is all about nipping something in the bud. Just before we do that, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Sona and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. These quizzes are designed to help you with your everyday lay language. That's the kind of language that you would use with your patients or that your patients would use with you. And the quizzes are aimed to get you ready for your OET and beyond. So my questions for you today are these then. What does nip it in the bud mean? For what kind of conditions could it be appropriate to use this idiom? And what treatment advice can you give to a patient with a fungal nail infection? That should give you a bit of a clue as to what kind of conditions you might want to use this idiom with. Now, as I said, this is an OET speaking special, so we'll also include a pharmacy role play for you at the end, and we'll go through interesting vocabulary that you can use in it. Don't forget to please click on the like button, share it with a colleague who you think might find this useful as well, and subscribe to us. And if you press that bell icon, you'll also be updated every time we release a new video. So back to my questions then, and what does nip it in the bud mean? Nip is a cutting action, which is why we've got those lovely pictures of various kinds of cutting instruments, such as scissors and cicadas here. And to nip it in the bud actually means to stop a bad situation from becoming worse by taking early action. So just as something's beginning to develop something not good, we stop it from happening. And the pronunciation here is bud. So it's that up sound, a uh, bud. What is a bud? Well, a bud is part of a flower. It's the beginnings of a flower. And as you can see here, these poor roses are covered in these insects, in aphids. This actually happened to me. It was terrible. Um, and I had to cut off all the buds to stop the infection from growing and spreading to the rest of the plant. So to nip it in the bud means to cut off anything that will make the situation worse in the end. So you remove the buds so that the whole plant doesn't suffer. And when can you use this idiom? And how about my next question? When can you actually use this idiom? Well, basically, you can use it any time you want to encourage your patient to take swift action. By acting now, they can prevent something getting worse later on. Preventative action, of course, stops this from happening. And we can use it with conditions such as a cold sore, a nail fungal infection, or even something like a child's behaviour. For example, if they're chewing with their mouth open, you want to nip that behaviour in the bud. Every time you see it, you try and tell them or encourage them not to do that. So what treatment advice can you give a patient then who has a fungal nail infection? Just to remind you guys that I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm an English teacher who has been working for over 15 years and has also done my premium preparation provider course. So all my medical advice comes from the NHS website. So when you want to give a patient treatment advice for a fungal nail infection, of course, first of all, you find out what symptoms the patient is experiencing. You also need to know, does anything make the condition worse or better? Have they experienced it before? Have they tried anything themselves to make it better? Then you'll probably need to explain what the condition is and of course give them some treatment advice. In today's video we're just going to focus on the bottom two things, explaining what the condition is and giving them some treatment advice. 
If you follow us on YouTube, you'll be able to see more videos which go through other things like finding out the symptoms from a patient. And of course, on our Udemy courses, which are short courses designed as short focused insights into the OET, you'll be able to go into these kind of things in much more detail. I'll put all the information in the box below. So this is the information given by the NHS about a fungal nail infection and of course you need to explain this to your patient in lay language. Let's go through what's been said to us by the NHS and we'll focus on pronunciation and interesting ways you can describe what's happening in everyday terminology. So a fungal nail infection is something quite common and they're not normally anything serious, but they can take a long time to treat. Infections usually affect your toenails, but you can get them on fingernails too. So of course we've got two different kinds of nails. We've got toenails on our feet and fingernails on our hands. So to explain this and to explain what's going on in lay language, we could say something like this. Fungal nail infections usually affect your toenails, but you can get them on your fingernails too. They sometimes start at the edge of your nail, so maybe at the bottom of your nail, and the infection often spreads, moves across to the middle of the nail, making the nail discoloured. It changes its colour and sometimes thicker in parts. The nail becomes brittle and pieces can break off. Of course, nails are normally something really strong. When they become brittle, they are easily broken. They flake off. Sometimes the whole nail lifts off, so the whole nail actually comes off, and this can cause pain and swelling in the skin around the nail. Of course, we don't want it to get to this stage, so as soon as you see the infection at the edge of the nail, you need to nip it in the bud. If you have diabetes, there are other complications as well, so you should definitely see a foot specialist, a podiatrist, because it can lead to complications of diabetes. So pronunciation here, fungal, fungal, spreads, spreads, discoloured, discoloured, brittle, brittle. And what treatment advice can you give a patient then? So the pharmacist, that's you if you're a pharmacist, hello to you, can help with these kind of infections. They may suggest antifungal nail cream, which can take up to 12 months to cure, that doesn't always work, or nail softening cream, which is used for up to two weeks. It softens the nail and the infected part can be scraped off. The infection is cured when you see healthy nail growing back at the base. So if something's bothering you, it's annoying you, it's irritating you. So to bother means to irritate or annoy. Softening, of course, is to make something soft and scraped off is to remove with an instrument such as a blunt knife and you're just removing the top layer. So using this information, what treatment advice can you give a patient? Well, First of all, ask them, is the nail bothering you? Is it irritating you? Is it painful? And then you offer them the treatment that's most appropriate. I can give you an antifungal cream to use. But of course, you have to warn them that this takes time. It does usually take up to 12 months, though, to cure. Why have I put though in? because it's a little bit unusual. A patient might expect to put the cream on for a couple of weeks and be okay. In this case, it could take up to 12 months. That's a long time. And then the alternative, or I could give you a nail softening cream, which will soften the nail and then you can scrape off the infected part. Scrape off. And then you tell them how they can know it's worked 
and you tell them you'll know the infection is cured when you can see healthy nail growing again at the base. And then you can move on to some do's and don'ts. Do treat athlete's foot as soon as possible to avoid it spreading. We want to nip that infection in the bud. Keep your feet clean and dry. Wear clean socks every day. Wear flip-flops in showers at the gym or pool. And throw out old shoes. Flip-flops are what you wear on the beach. I know in different countries they're called different things, but in the UK we call them flip-flops. Don't wear old shoes. Don't wear shoes that make you feel hot and sweaty. Don't share towels. Don't wear other people's shoes and don't share nail clippers or scissors. So again, using this information, how can you give this to your patients? We'll find out in our OET speaking role play run through, where we'll again go through some useful expressions. Just before we do that, can I remind you to please click on that like button, share this with a colleague and subscribe to us. OK, here we go. Here is a role play for a pharmacist. I'm going to give you three minutes to read through and prepare. Okay, that's your three minutes up. So let's go through this. So your patient has come to you. They are complaining about an itchy and unsightly nail. So it's obviously bothering them. It's itchy. They want to scratch it. It's unsightly. They don't like the look of it. And they're going on holiday soon and they are keen to wear open toe shoes. We start by asking the patient about their symptoms and if they have diabetes, 
Then you explain what you suspect it is, a fungal nail infection, and you can explain how it happens. We've already looked at this already. Find out if it's happened before and then explain the treatment options. Then you can inform the patient about any complications that may occur and emphasise the need to treat it quickly, to nip it in the bud. Reassure the patient that it's unlikely to be anything serious. As I said, in this video, we're just going to focus on number five and six, explaining what the condition is and then giving them some treatment advice. So how can you say this to your patients? How can you explain that you suspect a fungal nail infection and how can you outline the condition? 30 seconds to have a little think how you can phrase that. So how did you go? What did you think of then? If it was me, I would start with something like, it sounds to me like you've got a fungal nail infection. If it's on their toe, of course, you might not be able to see it for yourself. And in the OET, you don't have to examine the patient in any way. So it sounds to me like you've got a fungal nail infection. This usually starts at the edge of your nail, like you've described, so you're referring back to what the patient has told you. That's a tick in your OET criteria, but can then spread and cause discolouring. That's why your nail looks like yellowish colour you mentioned. So you're referring, you're tying your information giving with what the patient has already told you. It's something quite common and can happen if your feet get hot and sweaty for long periods of time. So you're reassuring the patient that it's nothing strange. And it's normally nothing serious, but it is infectious. So it's important we treat it quickly and nip it in the bud. There we go, that expression that we started off looking at, nip it in the bud. Now you need to explain the various treatment options and explain there's no immediate cure. Can you remember how to do that? Well, I would say something like, the thing is, there is no quick cure, really. Introduce the information you're going to give, warn the patient, the thing is, that will alert them to the fact that something that they don't probably want to hear is coming up. And the fact is, there's no quick cure. Nail infections can sometimes take up to 12 months to heal completely. I can give you an antifungal cream, which you apply twice daily after cleaning and drying the area. But as I say, that does take time. So you're emphasizing the fact. And then, but I know you were worried about the appearance when you go on that lovely holiday. So I can give you a nail softening cream instead. This softens the nail so you can scrape off the infected part. So you're referring back to what the patient has told you again. Again. All right, then one more thing to look at together. You need to reassure the patient that it's unlikely to be anything serious. 30 seconds to think about how you can do that.
So you can just say something like, it most likely isn't anything serious. And then address the patient's concerns. I know it's not ideal for a holiday, but as long as you get the treatment started now, you'll be fine in the long run. The long run is later on, of course. To stop it spreading, it's a good idea to throw away any old shoes. So, I don't know, maybe that's a good excuse to get some nice new holiday shoes. So you can make a little joke if you feel comfortable doing that. Try to keep your feet clean and dry and don't wear any shoes that make you feel hot. Carry on wearing flip-flops at the pool and don't share footwear or clippers with anyone else. So simple and clear instructions for your patient. Here is the patient's card in case you need it. So you can practice with a colleague and I really hope you found this useful. If you did, please click on that like button and share it with someone else that you think might also like it and subscribe to us. For more information about our Udemy On Demand courses, which will give you a short focused insight into the OET, then please have a look at the information box below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye. See you next time.